Our ocean, nearly 4 billion years old, first ever life on Earth breathed inside this vast beautiful world. But now, it is in danger, threatened by a truly human-made problem, marine pollution. From the remotest Pacific Islands to the bottom of the Mariana Trench to right here on the beaches of Goa, marine pollution is poisoning vast stretches of water. Every year, almost 1 lakh marine animals get killed due to it. And the intensity of marine pollution is one of the highest among all types of pollution. You will be shocked to know that 10 million tons of litter are dumped into the sea every year. 400 kilos per second. By 2050, our ocean could contain more plastic than fish. From plastic choked beaches to chemically contaminated coral reefs, marine pollution is emerging as one of the most serious yet underreported crises of our time. So in this video, let's understand what is marine pollution, what's causing it, how is it affecting countries like India, and most importantly, what can we do to stop it? Let's start with the basics. Marine pollution refers to the introduction of harmful substances, chemicals, waste, oil, plastics into the ocean. These pollutants don't just stay where they are dumped. They spread through currents, enter food chains and disrupt entire ecosystems. According to the UN, over 80% of marine pollution originates from land-based sources. That includes sewage, plastic waste, chemicals from agriculture, oil spills and even untreated urban runoff. So what exactly is polluting our seas? Let's break it down. First is the plastic waste. Every year, the world generates over 300 million tons of plastic and at least 11 million tons end up in the ocean. From grocery bags to microplastics, they choke marine life and enter our food chain. Untreated sewage and industrial discharge. Many developing countries still release wastewater directly into rivers and coastal areas without treatment. This leads to algal blooms, dead zones and disease outbreaks, oil and chemical spills. Whether it's large tanker accidents or slow leaks from old boats, like in Tamil Nadu, oil forms a thin film on water, suffocating marine organisms and damaging coastal economies. Nutrient runoff Fertilizers and pesticides from farms enter rivers, carrying nitrates and phosphates into the sea. These cause oxygen-depleted zones where almost nothing can survive, like the death zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Derelict boats and ghost fishing gear in India's coastal regions Old boats and discarded fishing nets are increasingly being identified as serious pollutants. These ghost nets continue trapping fish for years without any human involvement. The effects of marine pollution are alarming, both environmentally and economically. Marine life suffers. Turtle choke on plastic bags, fish ingest microplastics, coral reefs bleach and die, and some species are disappearing altogether. Fisheries collapse. Pollution reduces fish populations and affects their breeding grounds. This directly hits livelihoods in coastal areas, especially in countries like India, where over 4 million people depend on fishing. Human health is at risk. Toxic chemicals from polluted waters end up in seafood. Microplastics have been found in human blood, lungs, even in unborn babies. Coastal ecosystems get destroyed. Mangroves, wetlands and estuaries, which act as natural barriers against storms and floods, degrade, leaving coastlines more vulnerable to climate disasters. According to UNEP, the economic cost of ocean degradation is over $200 billion annually. Globally, 40% of oceans are already heavily affected by human activity, including pollution, depleted fisheries and habitat loss. India with its 7,500 km coastline, is one of the top contributors to marine plastic waste. Cities like Mumbai, Chennai and Kochi face serious challenges with waste disposal and untreated sewage entering the sea. The Tengapattinam, Totukodi region is just one example, where locals are now protesting against decades of neglect and environmental mismanagement. So what can be done? The good news is that solutions exist and many are already working. Blue Carbon Ecosystems It includes protecting and restoring mangroves, sea grasses and salt marshes which naturally absorb carbon and filter water. Marine Litter Management Programs like UNEP's Clean Seas and India's Swachh Sagar Abhiyan are removing tons of plastic waste from beaches and raising awareness about sustainable disposal along with wastewater treatment. Nuclear Techniques the IAEA is working with 
coasting nations to use nuclear science to track pollution. Isotopic tracing helps identify exact pollution sources, allowing targeted cleanups. Regulating derelict boats India is the global hub for the shipwrecking industry, particularly Gujarat. But there's an urgent need for policy reforms to recycle, remove or safely dismantle abandoned boats. This would prevent oil leaks and open up fishing routes again. Let's look at some case studies which lead us by example. Kovalam Beach Revival in Kerala One struggling with plastic waste and sewage, Kovalam is now a model blue flag beach thanks to community-led waste segregation, water testing and tourist education drives. IAEA projects in the Pacific Islands In partnership with UN agencies, countries like Fiji and Kiribati are using nuclear techniques to monitor water quality track fish contamination and protect coral reefs from industrial pollutants. The UN's Regional Seas Program is calling for urgent, coordinated international action. That means better urban planning and waste management, investment in coastal ecosystem restoration, regulations on single-use plastic and toxic discharge, global cooperation on marine monitoring technologies. The goal is not just to reduce pollution but to build resilience. Because the ocean is not a dumping ground, it's a life source. As the UN says, we are the first generation to understand the damage we are doing to the ocean and possibly the last that can do anything about it. The question now is, will we?